Edmund Spencer's Prothalamion Calm was the day, and through the trembling air, sweet-breathing Zephyrus did softly play, a gentle spirit that lightly did delay, hot titan's beams, which then did glister fair, when I, whom sullen care, through discontent of my long fruitless stay in prince's court, and expectation vain, of idle hopes which still do fly away, like empty shadows did afflict my brain, walked forth to ease my pain along the shore of silver streaming Thames, whose rutty bank the which his river hems was painted all with variable flowers and all the meads adorned with dainty gems fit to deck maidens' bowers and crown their paramours against their bridal day which is not long, sweet Thames run softly till I end my song. There in a meadow by the river's side a flock of nymphs I chanced to espy, all lovely daughters of the flood thereby, with goodly greenish locks all loose untied, as each had been a bride. And each one had a little wicker basket made of fine twigs and trailed curiously, in which they gathered flowers to fill their flasket, and with fine fingers cropped full feteously the tender stalks on high. Of every sort, which in that meadow grew, they gathered some, the violet pallid blue, the little daisy, that at evening closes the virgin lily, and the primrose true, with store of vermeil roses, to deck their bridegroom's poises, against their bridal day, which was not long, sweet Thames run softly, till I end my song. With that I saw two swans of goodly hue come softly swinging, swimming down along the lea. Two fairer birds I yet did never see, the snow which doth the top of Pindus strew, did never whiter shoe, nor Jove himself when he a swan would be, for love of Leda, whiter did appear, yet Leda was they say as white as he, yet not so white as these, nor nothing near, so purely white they were, that even the gentle stream the which them bare seemed foul to them, and bade his billows spare, to wet their silken feathers, laced they might soil their fair plumes with water not so fair, and mar their beauties bright, that shone as heaven's light, against their bridal day which was not long, sweet Thames run softly till I end my song. Eftsoons the nymphs which now had flowers their fill ran all in haste to see that silver brood, as they came floating on the crystal flood, whom they, when they saw they stood amazed still, their wondering eyes to fill, them seemed they never saw a sight so fair, of fowl so lovely, that they sure did deem them heavenly born, or to be that same pair, which through the sky draw Venus' silver team, for sure they did not seem to be of begot of any earthly seed, but rather angels or of angels breed. Yet were they bred of summer's heat, they say, in sweetest season when each flower and weed the earth did fresh array, so fresh they seemed as day, even as their bridal day which was not long, sweet Thames run softly till I end my song. Then forth they all out of their baskets drew great store of flowers to honor of the field, that to the sense did fragrant odors yield, all which upon those goodly birds they threw, and all the waves did strew, that like old penis waters they did seem, when down along the pleasant temps ashore, scattered with flowers, though Thessaly they stream, that they appear through Lily's plenteous store, like a bride's chamber floor. Two of those nymphs, meanwhile, two garlands bound, of freshest flowers which in that mead they found, of which presenting all in trim array their snowy foreheads, therewithal they crowned, whilst one did sing this lay, prepared against that day, against their bridal day which was not long, sweet Thames run softly till I end my song. 
Ye gentle birds, the world's fair ornament, and heaven's glory, whom this happy hour doth lead unto your lover's blissful bower, joy may you have, and gentle hearts content of your love's compliment, and let fair Venus, that is queen of love, with her heart-quelling sun upon you smile, whose smile, they say, hath virtue, virtue to remove all love's dislike and friendship's faulty guile for ever to assile. Let endless peace your steadfast hearts accord, and blesses, blessed plenty wait upon your board, and let your bed with pleasures chaste abound, that fruitful issue may to you afford, which may your foes confound and make your joys redound upon your bridal day, which is not long. Sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. So ended she and all the rest around. To her redoubled that her undersong, which said, Their bridal day should not be long, and gentle echo from their neighbor, the neighbor ground, their accents did resound. So forth those joyous birds did pass along, adorned the lead that to them murmured low, as he would speak, but that he lacked a tongue, yet did by signs his glad affection show, making his stream run slow, and all the fowl which in his flood did dwell, gone flock about these twain that did excel, the rest so far as Cynthia doth shend, the lesser stars, so they enraged well, did on those two attend, and their best service lend against their wedding day, which was not long. Sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. At length they to all merry London came, to merry London, my most kindly nurse, that to me gave this life's first native source, through all, through, though from another place I take my name, a house of ancient fame, where the, there when they came, whereas those bricky towers, the which on Thames broad age back do rod, where now the studious lawyers have their bowers, their wiles some want their Templar knights to bod, so they decayed through pride. Next whereunto there stands a stately place, where oft I gained gifts and goodly grace of that great Lord which therein want to dwell, whose want to well now fails my friendless case. But ah, here fits not well, old wolves, but joys to tell against the bridal day, which is not long. Sweet Thames, run softly till I am my song. Yet therein now doth lodge a noble peer, great England's glory and the world's wide wonder, whose dreadful name late through all Spain did thunder, and Hercules, two pillars standing near, did make to quake and fear fair branch of honor, flower of chivalry, that fillest England with thy triumph's fame. Joy have thou thy noble, of thy noble victory, and endless happiness of thine own name, that promiseth the same, that through my proudness and victorious arms thy country may be freed from foreign harms, and great Elysia's glorious name may ring through all the world, filled with thy wide alarms, which some brave muse may sing to ages following. Upon the bridal day, which is not long, sweet Thames run softly till I end my song. From those high towers this noble lord issuing, like radiant Hesper when his golden hair in the ocean billows, he hath bathed fair, descended to the river's open viewing, with a great train ensuing. Above the rest were goodly to be seen, two gentle knights of lovely face and feature, beseeming well the bower of any queen, with gifts of wit and ornaments of nature, fit for so goodly stature, that like the twins of Jove, they seemed in sight, which decked the baldric of the heavens bright, they two forth pacing to the river side, received those two fair brides their love's delight, which at the appointed tide, each one did make his bride against their bridal day, which is not long, sweet pains run softly till I end my song.